Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Now the third time the U.S. has struck uh, Iranian uh, pro-Syrian militia working inside the country there, uh, according to RT News. And we'd actually seen this early this morning on RIA.ru, uh, but we're busy working with the uh, satellite program filming that this morning and did not bring this news out earlier. But I still think we have a little bit more information than what RT is sharing with us here. They say in their article here, U.S. strikes pro-government forces in Syria shoots down a drone. Uh, but it's not the only thing that is going on. We're finding out, too, that Iran-backed uh, forces have threatened to hit U.S. positions in Syria. And, of course, that drone being one of those suspected, uh, uh, an armed drone that the U.S. was suspecting that Iran may be using that against them. Uh, Reuters reported June 7, 2017, a military alliance fighting in the support of Bashar al-Assad said on Wednesday it could hit U.S. positions in Syria, warning that its self-restraint over U.S. Uh, uh, airstrikes on government forces would end if Washington crossed red lines. Uh, but it's not only that either. We also had this article right here coming out on RIA uh, Novosti, and this article here uh, is entitled Headquarters of the Allies of Syria Threaten the U.S. with a Retaliatory Blow, RIA.ru uh, said, and this was on June the 7th. The Operational Headquarters of Allies of Syria, which include the forces of the Lebanese and Hezbollah and Iran, uh, announced its readiness to strike at the positions of the U.S. military if necessary. Kind of like the other article that was talking about crossing the red line, but then uh, the situation turned a little bit different there inside of Syria, and the U.S. did another strike against the Iranian forces in that area there. And according to the article, the translation here, the U.S. coalition struck a new blow against the pro-government forces in Syria. Uh, uh, says here, a coalition led by U.S. dealt a new blow to the pro-government forces in Syria, official spokesman Ryan Dillon said. According to Dillon, the tank and artillery installations that came too close and threatened the Allied coalition of forces were destroyed. As in the previous two cases, a blow was struck near the village of At-Tanf, uh, where the coalition forces and their allies have been operation, operating for several months. Dillon was at a loss to say whether there were any casualties as a result of the last blow, noting that the military is now finding out. Uh, Dillon said that the coalition had knocked down a drone pro-government forces after he allegedly tried to strike at it. UAV dropped ammunition, which did not affect the coalition in any way. The drone had ammunition, so we shot him down, Dillon said. This is the first known case where the pro-government forces in Syria tried to strike at a coalition led by the United States. So RIA is saying that the coalition, uh, the Syrian coalition, have actually tried to strike at the U.S. This being, according to Dillon, the spokesman there, that changes the ball game altogether. As we have been reporting here on Israeli News Live for some time, this is only a setup, and they have been working on drawing uh, Syrian and pro-Syrian forces fighting faction Hezbollah, especially Iran, into the conflict there, only to justify a retaliatory measure. Now, with that being said, this article right here on Defense Blog, Germany to relocate the tornado E6 uh, uh, EC6, ECR fighters from Turkey to Jordan, that is no coincidence. We reported that already to you here on Israeli News Live before, that the whole idea of Germany justifying the moving of their military forces from the Turkish uh, air base, the Insulik air base, where the U.S. has its forces at, over to Jordan is only a ploy. They are utilizing, and Turkey is working with NATO to make it look like there's tensions when there's really not tensions, and that gives them the justification to move down this military force down into Jordan so that they can prepare for the launch on Damascus. Definitely no doubt about what is about to transpire in Syria and possibly even in Iran. And meanwhile... Uh, Lorenzo on Already Happened is posting up the U.S. and ROK forces continue to move tanks by railroad in the northern area of South Korea. As you can see on your uh, screen here, we see the tanks moving along uh, the railway here. It looks like at a train station there uh, in South Korea headed to the northern border there. Uh, and it definitely, uh, and again, of course, on vehicles as well, even just driving up the highway there in South Korea headed north. 
very concerning situation inside of, uh, uh, of, of South Korea on going towards the North Korean border. At the same time, US B-1B supersonic heavy strategic bomber flies over Latvia today. Uh, again, reported by already happened, says U.S. Air Force Global Strike Command B-1B Lancer refuels from a U.S. Air National Guard KC-135 uh, Stratton tanker during exercises Saber Strike 17 above Riga, Latvia, June 8, 2017. It's, you know, the, it's everywhere in the world. We are on the verge, it looks like, of a global catastrophe if something doesn't change soon. But you know, it just seems to be exactly what the elite want to happen. And I think that elite is controlled by even a deeper elite than that. Maybe an extraterrestrial one. Who, who, who really knows? Uh, demonic powers is really, I guess, the best way to describe that. Not so much alien, but devils. Uh, masquerading around in human flesh. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.